following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We got a really fun show for you guys today. Hopefully we can like elevate the mood a little bit with all the terrible things going on in the world. Before we get started, let me introduce my cool, outrageous, gorgeous man about town, Mr. Ron Russell. Hey everybody. Um, it's an old saying, the show must go on, no matter what happens, no matter what tragedy, no matter what sort of sad depression happens to you, you have to shuck it off and just become the actor. I'm trying very hard to do that today. Uh, I hope I can give you a fun show. As I wrote on Facebook, I'm devastated over this war that has broken out in Israel. The un Thinkable things that are happening are shocking. Uh, a second Holocaust has come to the Jewish community. Killing of babies, uh, killing of adults. Uh, the, the the, I can't believe what's going on in this world and that we allow it. I fear that it happen, will happen in America because of our open borders. I'm worried that maybe all of these Hamas or whatever they are, horrible Arab things, Terrorists. whatever they are come into our country and do the same thing to us, to be shot to death while you're sleeping in your bed. Anyway, if you want to hear any of that, you can go to the news. You don't need to hear it from me. Our show is a fun show, an interview show, and an up show. And I will do my very best to give you the best show today that I can give you. I want to give shout outs and say hello. Lady Cindy Lady Lake has joined us in the chat room. I want to thank her for all the promotional work she does to help Get people to tune into the show. Don Hinton is in the show. Hey, Don, hope you're well. Um, we also want to give a very happy birthday shout out to Dean K. Piper. Dean K. Piper is the owner of W4CY. We've been working with him for 16 years. Uh, love him to death. It, today is his birthday, so we want to wish him a very, very happy birthday and only good things to come for him today and every day. Happy birthday, Dean. I'm not going to say anything funny or sarcastic. <laughs> But being your age, I wouldn't want to be. <laughs> but being your age, I wouldn't want to be. No, he's four years older than I am. I'm 83 and he's 86. <laughs> also, uh, we want to thank everybody who's been tuning in to us on iTunes, which is Apple Podcasts. I would appreciate if you guys would do that more. I know you don't get to see the videos that way, but... We moved up from number 90 to number 52 on the iTunes charts or the Apple Podcast charts. Um, and we want to keep the numbers going up. It's a pretty big jump for one week, considering we've never been on those charts ever in our lives. So we really want to thank everybody for, for doing that and, and, and helping us, you know, uh, get up there on the charts. It's a lot of fun. And um, thank you. Dawn says she loves my red glasses with the shirt and Ron's sleek shoulders. My what? <laughs> sleek shoulders. <laughs> Dawn, I hope you're well, too. I hope everything is good. I love all your cat pics that you've been putting up. Um, we really do have a fun show. There was one other thing I wanted to, to uh, give a props to. I forgot what it was. 52. Oh, you guys, Irene Michaels, the um, singer, songwriter, lady that we had on our show who's an author. She was also in the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, she was on our show several months ago, and I want to just congratulate her that she's uh, for your consideration on the Grammy ballot for Best New Artist at 78 years old. So good for her. It shows you age is just a number and you can do whatever you want, which Ron tells you that every week. Because look at him. He's like nonstop. Yeah, and I'm only 43. Um, that's right. And you're only 43. And if you believe that, guess what? I have a bridge in Brooklyn that I own. 
and I'm putting it up for sale. And I'll let you have the Brooklyn Bridge for a very good price. Contact me. I'll see you guys. My birthday's on Sunday. I'm going to be old, 59. Mm, I got to get a younger one because I would never <laughs> sleep with a 59 year old. So I'm going to be 59 and wait till you see what I'm going to get for my birthday. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's a black eye if it's he a, doesn't behave. It's a Chucky birthday, you guys. It's going to be fun. Like Imagine I have to sleep with almost a 60 year old big. Ugh. Ugh. Never thought in my life. I'm like, the older I, I, I get, the more gorgeous I get. And I lost five pounds in the yeah, last two well, weeks, too, you guys. I. I, I <laughs> never dreamed in my life that I would have to one day sleep with a 60-year-old. Well, one day he's going to be 72. <laughs> also, not 72, 70 also, and 72. <laughs> you know, can't we trade in our mates, like, when they get to be a certain age? You know, you trade in a car, right, if it's over three years old? Well, can't we trade in our mates if they get to be 60 and get no. a 30-year-old? <laughs> no. <laughs> be not talking, but you're joking. <laughs> Isn't he cute, you guys? I'm not sure. He's adorable. I'm not sure. He is adorable, and uh, <laughs> everything is, is – is even though everything is terrible, we hope everybody's being safe, taking care of themselves. We have really two fun guests today, you guys. Our first guest is going to be uh, Max Searchy. Um, I think you're screwing up that last I time. know. We're going to ask him anyway. And no, spell it. C-E-R-C-H-I. Cherchi. Okay, well, I don't speak Italian, so for me it's Searchy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, but that's like my real and, uh, name. My real last name is Sassadico. Now, how many people can pronounce Sassadico? Not too many. Sassadico. 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 Cesarico in English. And I have been called Cesarico. That's every friggin' thing you could think of. So my father was frustrated, cut the name to Sarego, and from Sarego. But I was born under Cesarigo. So Cerego is not even my real legal name. I'm an outcast. My sister is a, no, she's a Cesarigo. No, I'm a Cerego, I'm sorry. I'm legally a Cerego, not a Cesarigo. So I don't even bear my real family's name. Okay. That's what they thought of me. They said, eh, so what? Make him a different name. Ah, anyway. Oh, now you, I forgot what I, I was adapted say. Russell because I loved and adored Jane Russell as a young boy. Uh, and I took her name when they said to me, your name is too ethnic. Because back in 1959, when I started acting, they said, no one will ever remember the name. It's ethnic. Get an easy name. Get an American name. So I chose Russell after Jane Russell, uh, never dreaming that one day I would be her best friend and hang out with her and be with her, go to her house. She came to my house for until she passed away. So that name is lucky for me. So you guys, B. Claudia has just joined us from Germany. Hey, I, wanna, I wanna just give her a thank you, you guys. All those really beautiful promos that you see sending you to Apple iTunes and sending you to the show and stuff, those are made by B. So I wanna thank her, she's fabulous. And I really do appreciate all that you do for us. So thanks again, B. I do also, B. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we want to give a shout out to all the places you can listen to the show. We really want you, if you're listening to it and not watching the video, we really want you to watch it on Apple, listen to it on Apple Podcasts. But you can also hear us on SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Prime. So those are, and then we're on about 150 or 60 more, but like everybody knows, these are the ones that everybody like knows and goes to all the time. Any device that you have that uses the internet we are on, and you can find us. Even your cell phone. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely. It's Excuse amazing. Me. It's amazing what they do today, how we can be seen all over. You know, years ago you filmed it, and we were lucky if a network picked it up. But today, no matter what, look at, I mean, how many amateur people have uh, begun doing podcasts, people that were, not, they're not even in show business. They're not even actors. I think that before the, the pandemic, there was like 500,000 podcasts. And then after the pandemic, now there's like 2 million. Yeah, everybody wants to be in show business. They all think they're going to, hey, look at my friends. Hey, everybody, look, I'm on TV. Well, some of you should really get out of there because you stink. <laughs> you're really terrible. I mean, Jesus Christ, you look like shit. And you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And, and you have a podcast. It's amazing. Oh, my other, my other announcement that I wanted to make you guys. 
So next You're pregnant. No, next Friday we're going to see Bloodthirst, the Mahal Brothers new red carpet premiere yeah. movie with um And I love their movies. With Tara Reed and I think Costas Mandalore. And actually it was written by our first guest who will be coming on in a little while. And then on Saturday we're going to Halloween Hotness, uh raising money for St. Jude's. It's at the um uh, Madame Tussauds Wax Tussaud. Museum Tussaud. And we, we dress up in cowboy outfits. There's going to be a ton of people. They just added Eric Roberts. It's a Western thing. They just added Eric Roberts, who we'll, we know because he was on our show. Right. And um, so it should be a lot of fun. And you can donate by going to Halloween-Hotness.com. Um, so Halloween-Hotness.com or just Google it. You can get tickets still to go. I think they're only about $35 to get a ticket. Or you can just donate to St. Jude's uh, by going to Halloween-Hotness.com. So please um, do that, you guys. And... And, you'll see and if you're there. in a really good nature, and if you're in a giving mood, Israel needs money. Uh, I don't know the exact website or how to get the money to it, but I think it's the United Jewish Appeal. And send money because we need to help those people defend themselves against the evil corruption that has bestowed them. So find out what it is. I think it's uh, United Jewish Appeal, I think. Check it out, folks. B said she donated. Thank you. Um, so it's all really good, you guys. Um, our, our two guests today, our second guest is going to be James Stokes. He was on the show with us before. Yep. He's played Jason. Um, he was kind of a last minute. We had another guest scheduled, and uh, I called him out of the blue and said, hey, I had a cancellation. Could you come on the show? And so, uh, so he's coming on the show, but we had a great time with him. And he's actually in one of the movies that our first guest – did called adrenaline and um so it'll be kind of like fun that's our, our th six degrees of separation between the two guests and our first guest is is max searchy or however you pronounce it which we'll ask him Search. it's also massimiliano searchy because he's italian and he's probably one of the biggest independent directors in hollywood and he's got some great films and he's worked with some great people he's a really nice guy i, I met him actually last year at halloween huntness we run in the same circle, but we don't really like know each other. So it'll be fun to have him come on. And I thought it would be fun too, because he's Italian and Ron's Italian, and so they can kind of do that like Italian bravado and we're thing. Italian stick together. Yes, no matter what. So it should be good. And then after the show, you guys, I'm going to see Saw X, oh. Saw Ten with Ron's daughter, because Ron doesn't watch those bloody things where the blood spurts out. Them. I'm into it, but I don't know. When they it. chop off heads and hands oh, and stuff, he doesn't like that. Especially so now with the war in Israel, I don't want to see it. So I'm going to see Saw 10 with uh, Ron's daughter, Deidre, and uh, it should be a lot of fun for me to see a, a really scary They're ghouls. Movie. I feel people that go to see those movies are ghouls. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that sort of stuff. I'm in these movies because they're fun to make, but I never watch them because I'm not of that nature. I'm a, I'm a guy that likes romance and fun and laughter. I don't like negativity, and I find most of these movies extremely negative with the killing and the ugliness of, of the film. But that's the thrill that people enjoy so much because horror movies, believe it or not, are the number one films today for people to see. There's no such thing as, as the movies uh, Three Coins in the Fountain, Love is a Many, Splendid Thing, or those lovely... Uh, love stories of years ago. Now people want to see car chases, bullets, punching, kicking, blood, shooting, chopping, slashing. Which we saw. You know what? If you want to do that, just go to Israel. You don't have to watch a movie. Just oh, that's go, terrible. To, go to Israel because that's what's happening in Israel. The violence, the killing, the slashing. It's different though, because that's real. It's real, fake. but I'm saying so. If you're a thrill seeker, no, go to, go to Israel because that's I terrible. think it's the same thing. That's just terrible. We well, watched Fast X, you guys, and Fast X has so much bullshit in it, it's not even funny. And I'm a huge fan of the Fast and Furious series. You know, I did the costume design on the second one, and uh, um, so I, I, I couldn't believe But it's, like, so unbelievable, it's just not even, like, funny. Which I liked it so much better in the first two when it was just regular things that cars could really do as opposed to flying in space and parachuting off CGI, mountains. CGI, and, they have cars doing things that... They can't possibly do, but it's called movies and movies are fake. And that's why people go because they want to get away from the real world. But now when you go to these movies, you're back in the real world again. So you're not escaping the real world. I like a thriller. I'm in a wonderful movie coming up and I cannot wait for us to shoot it. And it's a thriller. 
and it's it's a good script, and that's and that's what I like when it's interesting, intelligent, and it gets gives you chills and you get goosebumps. So I think what we're going to do while we're waiting for our first guest to take a quick music break, you guys, this is Emblem Three. We had them on the show this year. Uh, one of my favorite like young pop bands. The name of the song is Sunset Boulevard. So enjoy it, and hopefully when we get back, our guest will be here. Oh, yeah, that's us. Hunt. Oh, five. Let's take a trip to Sunset Boulevard in the city of stars. Uh, the city of bloody lights and starry eyes. I said, no, welcome to the city of the angels. I love my women like I love my juice Naked, all natural, no preservatives or fakeness I like my ladies like I like my Brady's and bunches Got the six pack, I ain't talking about that crunches Hit it till I quit it like Tyson's punches I say you gotta rock if you wanna punch it I swear, I swear, make it less fizzy Buzz cute, Betty got me dolly dolly dizzy I'm lost in her eyes like, oh my God, where is she? Girl, here it's so cow, we getting busy in the city Getting busy in the city Let's take a trip to Sunset Boulevard In the city of stars Yeah, city of bloody lights And starry guys I said no, welcome to the city of Reflects off my aviators Here's a peace sign going out to all my haters High five, keep done, no hurt hand When we get symbols at your girl land Then we chill smooth, talk about Betty Blummy Kill Bruce, play Call of Duty Zombies, yeah Starting to get the best of me While she makes her mind up whether she wants me to wrestle Let's make sure we can hear him. Let's get him on. Go ahead and bring him in, Juan. Hello, guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, Max. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you. All good. All good. How about you guys? We're good. So let me ask you a question. How do I pronounce your last name correctly? Is Cherky. Cherky. Perfect. Oh, Cherky. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Timmy Star Show with Juan Russell, probably one of the biggest indie film directors in Hollywood, Max. Cherky, hello and welcome to the show. Hello and thank you for having me. How are you guys? Good. Let me introduce this. You stop in uh, there. So, so Moto, uh, how do you say upset? Uh, uh, the, the, the la guerra. Questa guerra è terribile. Ma che cosa può fare? Niente. Oh, parlo italiano. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my co-host. Yeah, sono italiano. 
è italiano, padre, ah, va bene. Mio padre è venuto di Genova, mia madre è venuto di Venezia. Perfetto, io di Napoli, di Napoli. Napoli in Italia. So this is Ron Russell, he's my co-host. Yes. Say hi to Max. Yes, yes. Hi, 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 hi. We have, chat, we have a chat room with people starting to fill up, so just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everybody. There you go, it's fun. So now where are you? You're in L.A., right? I am in LA. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I love it. So first of all, tell everybody what your real name is. So we didn't put his real name on his on his promo, you guys, because his name is so long it would take up the whole promo. But it's a beautiful name. Tell us your real name. <laughs> well, since I'm Italian, my first name is Massimiliano, with like Maximilian. But since I was a little child, even in Italy, they call me Max, because you know it's too formal. Massimiliano, I'm already gone. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Massimiliano. Yeah, what's the last name? Cherky. Oh, so Maximilian is not. My name, you ready for it? Rolando. Rolando, Rolando yes. Rolando Rocco Cesarigo. Perfetto, perfetto. <laughs> That's why I'm Ron Russell. <laughs> Easier, yeah, like me, Max, you know? <laughs> That's right. All right, so we're very happy to have you guys. If you want to follow Max in his... um. His Instagram, it's just his name, uh, as you see it on the screen, M-A-X-C-E-R-C-H-I. Um, he was born in Italy. He moved to... Dove in Italia? Napoli. A Napoli. A Napoli. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean? That, in the when, uh, when you're, if you, listen, my mother was half Napolitan. And when they got mad at you, my mother would go like this. Mm. <laughs> Timazzo, Timazzo. <laughs> And you used to run. Scappa via. You used to run, yes. yes. Scappa via, subito. Via, via. Via, via, <laughs> subito. So no to the tanti schiaffi in faccia. Sì. And my father, sì. in Genovese, the dialect of Genovese, you know what he used to say to me? Yes. Titaka miaggia. Capisce titaka miaggia? Yes, yes. I'm, yes. yes. I'm going to stick you right against the wall. Yes. <laughs> one hit, you're going to get stuck on the wall. Italians are wild people. Very, very. And my father was half German, so half Italian, half German. So, you know. Okay, so you have to. Was option A or option A? We, we have a, a, a fabulous okay. uh, girl in the chat, lady in the chat room who supports our show and does all kinds of graphics and stuff for her name. Her name is B. Claudia B. And she's in Germany. Um, okay. So say hi to B. Claudia because she's. Hi, B. Hi, B. How are you? She loves it. She put up all kinds of stuff about your, your cousin with the, the uh, Academy Awards and stuff, which we can mention. But so basically you came here and you made your first movie in 1993. So you've been making movies for 30 years and you don't even look old enough to be 30. Oh, my God. Thank you. I'm 50. 51, actually. See, I already oh, took one. You made your first movie when you were 21. <laughs> Grazie. Anche tu. Io sono 83. Also, you guys. No, uh, seriously. Io sono... No. What did you tell him? You're 83? Yeah, he's 83. Maximo, I'll give you 60. Gee, damn. There you go. He likes that, so thanks. What do you think of Sofia Loren, Anna Magnani? They're old now, but they still Would you like to direct Sofia and Anna Magnani? Would you have liked to have directed Anna Magnani? Of course, of course, of course. Brilliant I left yeah. Italy when I was young. I was 19 when I left Italy, so it's been a long time. <laughs> Actually, you did really good, though. If you made your first film at 21, it didn't take you long to get started. 22, 22. I moved, first movie was 94. Uh, so uh, in January will be 30 years. I mean, the, so That's awesome. I love it. So, so let's just... Uh, so. So did so you have a, a cousin, Michael Semino. Is that how you pronounce his name? Semino? Cimino, Cimino. Cimino. Um, you guys, he's the Oscar winner. He's the director of The Deer Hunter. I think he got like five. That movie got like five or six Oscars. It was one of the biggest movies ever. I love the movie. I can remember oh, it. Movie. The Deer Hunter. Oh, The Deer Hunter. A huge movie. So now was that a, because uh, I don't know when that movie actually came out, but did that have an, uh, like a, an emphasis or a, what's the word I'm thinking Like of? an influence? Yeah, an influence. I couldn't think of influence. Retarded. Okay. Did that have an influence, the fact that you had you know, someone in the business that was so successful? At the time, we uh, didn't even met because I was a child. I was, okay. really, I was really young. So I was not planning to be in the business until I was 14. I watched the movie The Hills of Ice with Wes Craven, directed by Wes Craven. And there was an actor that I really liked, Michael Berryman. 
Yes, and, he's a friend of mine. Okay. And yes, and then in '97 we became best friends. So oh, that was really awesome. good. That was really good. Yeah, it was really good. When something is meant to be. Uh, I actually, and it's funny because I actually invited him to come on today because I I didn't know that you were friends, but I just thought he would be a good person to have with you. He's a good but guy. He's going to come on like probably in November. Um, he good. Was available, but yeah, he's great. I met him at Scream Fest, uh, which is a horror convention in Florida. Because I'm from Florida, I used to live in Florida, um, and that's where I kind of got into all the horror stuff. But I love all of them. So, so the Hills Have Eyes. What did you think of then? If, if you like the Hills Have Eyes, what did you think of like the remake? I guess there's a bunch of remakes, but the first remake. I don't watch remakes. <laughs> oh, for you. That's a good answer. Thank I you, thank that. you, thank you. Uh, I mean, you know, we he we like are old school, so we have to keep. You know, why redo a movie? That's already been done. We already know the story. We already know the outcome. So, I love to... that answer because I always watch all the remakes, but I'm always disappointed. And and a lot of times, uh oh, what happened? A lot I don't of know. Oh. I'm still here. Hey, I'm what what happened? Still... He's gone. Oh, we don't see him. There there we go. <laughs> a lot Sound of times. Happen. A lot of times, uh, the remake like this, you can just go get new material. Like you're a writer, you write a bunch of stuff. So you, do you write most of your material? I write all my story. I have a screenwriter in Australia, Adrian Mills, that write all my screenplay. Uh, really, really good guy. And uh, we've been doing this for many years. Uh, so it's a good team. My composer is in Italy. My VFX person is in uh, UK. Uh, my writer is in uh, Australia, like I said. So it's an international team. And then we collaborate via internet, thank God. Oh, yeah, I love that. There's one thing I wanted to mention real quick, you guys. So, you guys, Max is also one of the celebrity guests at Halloween Hotness, raising money for St. Jude's next Good. weekend. Uh, we're going to be there. Um, Perfect. We'll meet there. Yes. Good. Actually, you probably don't even remember, but I was with, like, Raister Michaels or somebody, and I met you at the last Halloween Hotness. I don't know how long you were there, but you were there for a short while. Yes, I, very little, very little. Yes, yes, and I met you there briefly. Uh, that's how I knew, kind of like who you are. And then I... Uh, we kind of run in the same circle, but we had never run into each other because we know all That's the correct. People. That's correct. So I That's love correct. it. And also, we're going to be coming to the Mahal Brothers Bloodthirst premiere Friday. That I wrote. And you wrote it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's got like all these six degrees of se separation. So will, I like, will love you it. Will you be there? Uh, I will not be there. I will not be there. Yes. And it'll be there when Saturday, you guys. So buy a ticket for the St. Jude's Halloween Hotness, and you can meet Max along with all the other cool celebrities. And we'll be there, too. Very good. Very good. I wrote a story for it. Uh, Adrian Mills wrote the screenplay for Brothers. I was supposed to direct, but there was the COVID shutdown. So, and at the time I was overseas and I was not able to to make the get flight. Back. Probably yes. get back. Do, do you yes. miss Italy? Do you miss Napoli? Uh, it's been, oh my God, last time I was there was eight years ago. I missed oh, the pizza. Oh. <laughs> miss the pizza. Miss pizza. I love Italy. I, 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 I'm sorry that my father came here. That he didn't stay in Italy because then I would be living in Italy. Uh, Italy, Italy is good as a tourist to me. Italy, no, no, Italy is a magnificently beautiful country. The, the, the terrain, the people, the food, the uh, I don't care for the politics too much, uh, government not so hot, and uh, and as far as being Genovese, they're a little stuck up. <laughs> I, I, no, I prefer the Sicilian Napolitano. Yeah. Yes, the southern. Especially the Navalitans when they get mad at you and they say, okay, Can we say it? Can I'm, we say it? I'm going to say it. Um, they say, Che cazzo? No, peggio, peggio, I want to buy all the Genovese. Ma più peggio di questo. Sfacimi de putana. Si, si, si. We will not translate it for the viewers, but yes. <laughs> That's the sperm of a whore. <laughs> And, you know, in Italy, cursing is not vulgar. That's the funny part. Uh, when an Italian is screaming at another Italian because they caused it, fanculo, succio, do bastardo, queste parole, tutte quelle parole. All those words are said, and it doesn't mean anything in Italy. Why is that? Here in America, if you say the little estate, più piccolo cosa, everybody gets insulted. But in Italy, no. It's a way of talking, you know? It's like to say, hey, bro, pretty much. Yeah. You know? Or dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> dude. But I, I go to Italy often because I have Cugini in Genova. And, uh, 
uh, uh, quite a few cousins, and they're very elegant people, very beautiful people. Um, so hang on, let's go yeah, back I, to I you. Yeah, I enjoy, I love Italy. So, so I'm happy I'm Italian. So horror was your, because one thing I find very interesting, I went through your IMDb, uh, I went and watched trailers of all your movies that I could see. Some of your movies I've actually seen. How uh, was, because you're not typecast, you know, all the other indie horror, all indie directors are typecast. They do horror or they do sci-fi. They only do one thing. And you are not typecast. You've done everything. Thank God, yes. What I did was uh, I started as a low, low budget indie movie, uh, movie director. Then in 2017, I had my big break with Lionsgate. And then after that, I always contact the sales agent or distributor like uh, Cinetel, Lionsgate, and the rest of them, and ask them what they want. And based on what they want, I do the movie for them. So right now, sci-fi is hot. So now we're doing uh, you know sci-fi, which is in the post right now, will be at the American film market in, uh, in November. When you direct. When, when you direct, do you direct like Victorio De Sica or do you direct like Alfred Hitchcock? Are you an direct, like, director or an Italian director? I direct like Max. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Max. If I were in a movie because I'm an actor and you were directing me, how would you direct me with the mentality of the Italian or the mentality of the American? To be, to be honest, it's a mixed mentality because being born in Italy and watch a lot of Italian movie and also being a big uh, movie buff of American. So the mentality is, is mixed. So it's a sort of a very different approach. I give my actor 99% of freedom unless they completely go off character. And then that's where I intervene. I am more of a technical director on aspect of where to put the camera, what kind of lenses, etc., etc. In regards of the actor, I give them, like I say, 99% freedom. Uh, I don't direct like it's theater, you know, walk three step, grab the glass of water, drink it, put it down. That's stupid. You know, you have to give an actor his freedom. If not, his character will not show his own film. All right. Now, when Victoria De Sica directed, he expected everything from the actor. He would, because Sophia Loren was, was um, a fan of his, but she said working with him was difficult because he wanted every single bit of her. He wouldn't tolerate losing any of it. And he would insist on it. I want everything from you. Are you that way, being an Italian? All depends what kind of actor you're working with. If he's a no, professional. An actor, an actor is, from that yes, actor. Yes, yes, yes. If he's professional, he's doing that, like, I don't know, like Nick Turturro, which we collaborate a lot together. Uh, Nick Turturro, I just say, this is the script. It goes straight. If there is something that I don't like, we just do it together. We just change a few things, and then we we move on. So, uh, now, as, as a director, if you if we if I'm playing a mafia, which I always play, I always play a gangster, and my line is, "Oh shucks, darn heck, I'm going to hurt you." <laughs> Would you let me change it to "Gonna get you now"? Of course, of course, you that's know, normal. The director who understands the actor. Of course, of course. Yeah, that's right. No, 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 I'm just doing this because so many directors out there say, oh, no, no, we got to do it according to the script. No. Or the writer gets upset. I say, fuck no. the writer. Fuck the writer. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin my professionalism because he writes shitty words. So Thank hey, God they're good writers. Thank God they're good writers. So we yes. go along really well. Well, and you are <laughs> one of them. You're one of them. So you do have the movie in post production that'll be going. It's a sci fi movie, Andromeda Wars, with uh, yes. Chuck Liddell, Nicholas Turturro, John Mack, Rhino Michaels, Robert Donovan. We've had a bunch of them on our show. Yeah. Uh, Mata How do you say it? Uh, Matthias? Matthias. Matthias. He's awesome. He's, He's fantastic. fantastic. We are friends since 97. And uh, this was the first time we worked together. So it was very strange. So we know each other for almost 30 years, and this is the first time. So now the movie we're seeing Friday, you directed it. No, he wrote it. You wrote it? Oh, best. even better yet. Now I, I wrote the story. He said he wrote the story. It because he was stuck in COVID in another country. Oh, I heard that before. But now I'm going to really, really know who you are by your writing because I don't like. I get a lot of scripts, obviously, because of our TV show right now. People watch us and they find out who we are and they send me on the computer scripts. I can't get through three sentences sometimes. 
I mean, what the hell are they talking about? They have no idea. Man comes into the moon and he flies to the, the toilet. <laughs> and you're supposed to figure it out, you know? <laughs> when you write, I like the writing of years ago. The writing tells you the character, the person he is, what his mentality is, and what he's about to do. I have a lot of scripts, movies that I'm in. I'm in six movies coming up now because of the strike. A few of them, I have to have a fight with the director and the writer because I'm going to tell them, what you expect of me makes no sense. There's no character development. I'm an old actor, 64 years in the business. I believe in character development. Do you? Of course, of course. That's a lot of directors don't. Don't say of course. A lot of directors, they just read your lines. Yeah, but a lot of directors are directors. <laughs> I love that. They stink. They stink. They wake yeah. up in the morning and say, I'm a director now. That's I would love to work. I would love to work with you. Let's do something. Let's do something. Maybe someday we will. I'm a good actor. You get a lot out of me. Uh, I, would, I would like to work with an Italian director. Well, uh, fun. Something I, I've always thought of. Uh, that's why I think we're going to go to the Cannes Festival uh, next year. And mm -hmm. I think I'm going to meet a lot of Italian directors there. And I'm going to see if I can't get in an Italian movie. I would love to be in an Italian film. We're, a, we're an entertainment family, basically, because besides this show, I'm an entertainment publicist. And then I, oh, I, have, I, have, I, I, I produce a bunch of movies and so I, and raise money and stuff. So I know you guys. I know you guys. So it's a, it's a fun thing. <laughs> no, um, it's Fusato? No, uh, Fidanzato. Oh, Fidanzato. Yes. She's pretty, of course. Uh, yes, very. She's we work together. She's my producer. She's Italian? Yeah. No, she's from uh, Malaysia. Where? But she's American. Malaysia. 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 Oh, then she's gorgeous. Oh, then she, I, I have. You will, meet her, you will meet her at the. Uh, no, we have a friend of ours. Matter of fact, I'm working with her. Her name is Ming Ballard. More beautiful. I know the name. More be you know Ming. More beautiful than her, they don't find. I, like uh, I disagree. My my fiance no. is. Good. Ming, Ming, <laughs> I'm sure that she's gorgeous. No, Ming is Malaysian and Vietnamese. Vietnamese, Japanese, Chinese, and French and English. Oh, we go. Never saw. Do you know what she looks like, Ming? Yeah, I know what she looked like. I know she. Looked like. Well, she lost thirty pounds. We were friends on uh, Facebook. Facebook. There okay. you go. Good. She, she lost thirty pounds. Very it's, good. It's skinny and magnificent. I hope she will never find it back. She oh, won't, she so won't get it back. So Malaysian women are extremely beautiful. Yes. So on, I want to brag a little bit about some of your movies, um, and then I want to talk about horror a little bit with you. So you guys, uh, actually, we're going to play a trailer from one of his films called The Bouncer. And the reason I picked The Bouncer out of all the trailers you you sent me is because sometimes we get flagged if we play trailers from big studios, yeah. and they they won't let us keep it playing. They'll shut us down. And that one's not the so communist, thought, the communist um, in the business. But the movie star, first of all, I never I didn't know who John Ozuna was, and then I started looking at him. What a superstar dude he is. Like I was super impressed. Nicholas Totoro again, Costas Mandalore. You one thing is you work with a lot of the same people. I guess if they're really good, you like them because they're all A-list actors. I'm very uh, loyal, so I like to have always the same cast and crew as much as possible. But as soon someone's uh, fuck up, if I, if I can say that on uh, Yes, you can. You can then they immediately get removed. So there you uh, go. Yeah. All right. So you guys, he wrote Bloodthirst, which we're gonna go see. I wrote a story. The screenwriter wrote yeah. uh, my okay, screenwriter wrote. wrote story. Story. Got it. Okay. With Costas Mandalore, oh, Tara Reid, you know Robert Lasardo, Sarah French, Alyssa Dowling, BJ Mezik, Eileen Diggs. Almost all of them have been on the show. Uh, Adrenaline with both the Mandalores, Louis Mandalore and Costas Mandalore, and I wrote James Stokes down because he's our second guest. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I saw it on the, yeah, was on cool the preparation. He's Wait, a great guy. I want to ask Max. Great guy. I want to ask you a question. It's nothing to do. Sure. With, nothing to do with Hollywood. Do you think in New York City, the statue of Christopher Columbus should be taken down? No. Good. No. <laughs> <laughs> history right. is history, you know. That's right. Bad or good, but, they, not slave master. You know what? They forget that the Italians were slaves once. Absolutely, absolutely. The Jews were slaves. Absolutely. Everybody was a slave through history. 
not only the black people. So get over it, folks. You're just among all the rest of the slaves. So hold on, let me finish bragging. So we've got a movie called Lockdown, you guys, with Michael Pere, Bai Ling, Scott Andrade, we know really well. Thomas know Michael, Haley, we know really know well. Michael, forgive. Al Burke, we know really well. Um, he's the producer on a film called Painkiller. And I only brought it up because we've had Bill Oberst on our show a million times. Very um, good. Very good friend. Very good friend. With Michael Pere. And then The Penthouse, I actually saw um, with Michael Pere. I, actually, I didn't know it was you. You know, oh, back then oh, when I saw it, Michael Correa, Chris DeGrotti is a friend of ours, um, Nicholas Taturo, Robert Fortunato, and then May Day I saw with Michael Pere and Chanel Ryan, and Chanel Ryan's been on our show in the past. So a lot of these are are, are act, actually more action than horror. How did you yeah. like, like, uh, like how do you? So now you go to studios and find out what they want, and you you write a story based around that, so that way you know you're going to be able to to make it happen. Do you have a oh. favorite? Do you have a favorite genre? Um, the one that makes money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was good and honest, too. So I have a trailer. I have a trailer I want to play for the movie uh, The Bouncer. It's a, so you, what, would you, what would you call this movie? An action movie, right? It's an action movie. Yes, yes, yes. An action movie. We shot entirely in Romania. We had friends. We had fun. It was cold as hell. It was minus 5, minus 10, depending on the day. But it was a very good crew, very good cast. We had fun. So, so was, was uh, introduce it, one. You're gonna play. Look for the bouncer, and just introduce it. Say who you are, and this is your movie, and this is the trailer, and then we'll play it for everybody. Hi guys, this is Max Cherky. I'm the director of the bouncer. Uh, you will have fun. There are very good actor, John Azuna, Nick Turturro, uh, Costas Mandilor, and a uh, few more. Enjoy. Can you explain to me what the hell I just saw? Every week it's a new one, okay? If you stick around here long enough, you're gonna see that all the time and you gotta learn to look away. Who are you? Anyways? Don't touch me. For <laughs> what? Come on, come on! Come on! Go home. Or go to the hospital. Your choice. In Russia, you kill nothing. Shoot him! My ghost jam! I give you good life. This is how you repay me. It's not gonna end well. You know how to drive? No! as soon as possible. How did he keep finding us? It's a helicopter. Shoot! I'm in no trouble when I see it. His name's Kane. Ask anybody around here. He's into everything. You're not run forever. Already did. Yay! Love it. I like I, I like love it. So how did you find John Ozuna? I had never heard of him before, and then I looked him up and I saw he's in like in a million movies. <laughs> yes, yes. John Ozuna is a good friend. We started as friends on Facebook, then we start talking, 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 and he said, We will I would love to do a movie together. I said, okay, let's make it happen. And uh we, I reunite the team, the composer, the, the same writer, and uh, we made it happen in uh, Romania. As you can see, the helicopter is not CGI, it's a real helicopter. Real so helicopter. When he was doing this, we almost crashed, so it was a very good uh, ending. We almost had a different ending, but it didn't happen. So. Oh, no, I know, I love it. I think it's, uh, I think it's awesome. And so Ron only likes some action movies, but his favorite person is Jason Statham. He likes Jason Statham. Because he's so ridiculous. 50 guys come at him and he beats up 50 guys. And I think that's wonderful because it's fun. Jason does it. It's fun. Some of the actors, when they do it, they're really mean. Uh, I won't name 
one, there's one in particular who I won't, who was that way in person, who was really a mean person in person. And on film is mean. So I don't know. know. Who is this guy? I can't tell you. But, <laughs> but I think if you're mean in person and you're acting mean on film, you're not acting. You're no, you're but a vessel. Jason is a funny guy. And he makes beating up those people fun. And I enjoy that. I'm anti-violent. I'm not a, I'm not weak by any means. I mean, if anybody came near my daughters, I'd kill them. Of you course. Know, my children and my dogs and Jimmy. I mean, I would kill them. But I'm not a fan of, of blood and killing and cruelty, sadism. I don't believe that should be in film. I think film should be an escape, a place to go to, to escape what's happening today in this world. And I think we have too much of the negative, too much of the dark side of the world, ugly sets, gray clothing, dirty people, skeevy, vertigore, you know? I understand what you say. I understand what you say. So I like, I would like to see movies happier, lighter, brighter, to make people feel better about themselves. Even a horror movie. Uh, the old horror movies of years ago in the 50, 1950s, everybody was dressed well, the sets were well lit, and the stories were stupid, but the movie got by and made money. So you don't have to have a dirty sewer with rats and sweat and ugliness to make a movie scary. Psycho, Alfred oh, Hitchcock, you. Psycho. Of used a shower in a motel and terrified the world and still does. There are still people who will not take a shower alone. They call their husbands or wives and not me, I'm not lying. No, no, I'm, lying. I'm saw, laughing because it's true, that's why. I saw that movie, Max, when it came out in 1960. And I know people that said, oh, I can't, good women. Oh, my husband has to come in the shower. I can't so wait, hang on, I want to go. I, first men, of all, the men liked it. I like. You know why? Because they could go in the shower. Exactly, it's a good excuse. Oh, exactly. Oh, That's oh, why oh, I was smiling. Oh, 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 in the shower. I like. I, I, as you were saying before you came, so I like the action movies. I, I love Jason Statham. Um, one of my favorite. Series, I like action. One movies. of one of my favorite is is the Fast and Furious series, but I really enjoyed it more like in the first two. I did the costume design on the second one. I, I like the first two because. The things that they did were realistic and could really happen. Sometimes it gets a little bit too far fetched when, like, like in one of them when they're in outer space, you of know. Course, of course. You know I, that gets yeah, to be too much for me. The Fast and Furious movies are visually pretty. Yeah, they're fast. Yes. They're not ugly. They're well, well lit. The colors are good. The scenery is good. The aeroplanes, the whatever, the, the machinery, you know, the it's good. It's it. The yeah. budget, yes. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> to do all those things. You know, I love the Mall Brothers. I love the Mall them. Brothers. I do love them. I really mean it. I go to all their movies. Some of them I don't like. Majority I like. And I keep saying it over and over again. If only they had $50 million, I would love to see what they would do with $50 million. I'd like to see what you'd do with it, too, because I know you're not in that budget yet. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's all about the money, no question about it. Of course. But the talent is there, and the Mall Brothers know how to pick a good script. There's three movies in particular that I really enjoyed. Uh, I love Tommy Knockers because our good friend is in it, and he was wonderful in it. I, I can't think of this fucking uh, name. B.J. Mezik and Richard Grieco. Richard Grieco. I'm Richard, sure you know Richard Grieco. Richard was wonderful. He didn't do a goddamn thing in the movie. He did nothing. But he was wonderful. And I like, of course, the one where they come out of the paintings. Art of the Dead. That's Art the of the movie. Dead. So, I like that movie. That's how we met Robert Donovan, actually, because he's in Okay. Very good actor, Robert Donovan. Yeah, very good actor. So now I'm going to see your movie that they did on Friday. And I'm sure I'm going to like it. And I promise you I'll it's tell you. It's a vampire you. movie, and you like vampires. Oh, it's a vampire movie? Yeah, it is. It's a vampire movie. Post-apocalyptic. I'm going to be. Post-apocalyptic vampire movie. My, the third movie I'm doing. I play a vampire. Very good. But a, a gay vampire. It's okay. And, wait, it's a vampire. And, no, wait. And Ming Ballad is my daughter. And I'm teaching her how to become a vampire. It's a wonderful script. It's a very different script. It's not, nothing like the vampire movies you ever saw. And we're shooting that. That's the third film we're doing. So wait, I want to go back to him, though. I want to go back to him. 
So, so now when I'm looking at these movies that I picked out on your IMDb, besides Bloodthirst, which you didn't direct, actually all of these are more action than they From are. From 2017, I was doing more action. Yes. That's okay. Right. So what are some of the horror movies that, so far you wrote me a note and Simon Phillips, The Witcher. So what, what, what was that for? For The Bouncer. Simon. Uh, oh, Simon okay. Okay. Was, yeah, in the Witcher and a very, very good actor from UK. So we have never seen The Witcher. Do you recommend The Witcher? Very, very so. Very much. Very much. Okay, we need to watch. That's on, the it's, a, it's, it's a TV series. It's on Netflix, oh, I, I think. I watched it. Right. I watched a little bit of it. They were doing something on the Ouija board. No. No, no, no. Was this it? is Medieval Times. Uh, Medieval Times, Witches. Uh, oh. I think action they, uh, horror. They have action no, no, figures, no, no, and I, I collect no, action no, the, figures. The, movie, the, the TV series I watched was Medium. Oh, that's different. That's Medium, yeah, that's where they different. were on the board. But I love vampire movies, and I hope you wrote a good one because I love them. They're very uh, Like I say, I wrote a story. Adrian Mills wrote a screenplay. Together we fixed things there and there, and it's a post-apocalyptic vampire movie. Uh, it's uh, something a little bit uh, different. Post-apocalyptic. It means after the world is in, like, destroyed from oh. nuclear war. <laughs> Which could be any day now because it's coming any day. What's going coming soon. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I know you like to make the movies that make money. Like, if you were sitting around your house with your yes. girlfriend. Right now. Like, right now, yeah, and you didn't have anything to do and you were going to watch something, what genre would you, is, is your <laughs> genre to watch? Action. Action. Oh, okay. you definitely watch one of my movies, of course. <laughs> Wait, so what are some of your what are some of your favorite action movies? Uh, that I made or that I watched? No, just in general. Well, what's your favorite? First, tell us what's your favorite action movie that you made. Oh, the my favorite is the one that I will do soon. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. Usually, uh, I like all the action. My favorite movie that I really uh, liked the to do was Mayday because uh, it's something that I wanted to do exactly was action with a little bit of horror in it. It was something a little bit different. One Not location. Plane. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. That was my, my favorite action that I did. Of course, the bouncer, uh, adrenaline, and the rest that I did are, uh, you know, are, are very good. Each one is a different and going up one notch. Um, I, like, I like to ask questions about please. Because people don't always want to know about the business. They say, oh, bullshit, bullshit. What is this guy all about? Now, dime qualche cosa. What is your favorite pasta? Pasta, it's pasta with eggplants. Oh. He loves it. Tomato <laughs> sauce and eggplants. Very simple. No cheese, nothing. That was a good answer for him. He oh, loves eggplants. Oh. A la melanzana, I'm sure. Yes, yes. That's pasta my with favorite. melanzana. I eat eggplant at least twice a week. And My I can say cook very good eggplants as well. Pasta, oh, that's good. And pasta lentecchi. Hold on, we're going to switch, alternate, because well, I'm going to ask. Pasta, pasta lentecchi. Ti piace pasta lentecchi? No, I like the penne, penne pasta. Oh, okay. The so, hold on. so then we have, because um, uh, I saw on Facebook, I think you're 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 gearing up or sometime soon for May Day 2. Did I see it? Uh, oh. It's not May 2. It's another movie. It's another action movie on a plane. Oh, okay. Story, but right now we are in pre-production of another sci-fi, and uh, this one will be a sort of enemy of mine. I don't know if you guys remember that movie with Louis Gossett Jr. Yes, which back in the day. Enemy Mine. Yes, so, I remember it. Tell me, Enemy Mine. Do I see it? The movie now you didn't see I, it. It's a sort of story that we are going. We're gearing up to to that. I love all the sci-fi stuff, though. I think no, that's my that's a lot of fun. You have children? No kids. You, were you married? I, I was married, but I never wanted to have kids. No kids. I, can't, I had two cats, but... <laughs> we have three dogs. <laughs> now, is your... No, my turn. Wait, no, I'm still in, that, I'm still in the same question. Is, is your fiancé an actress? Uh, no, she's a producer. She's a producer. Oh, producer. She's a DP and a producer. Oh, you could get in trouble there. Be careful. It's a good, uh, it's a good team. It's a good team. Yeah, no, but I we think it together. We produce it together. So be careful when when you marry somebody in the business. It is, woo! But it's better in the business than not in the business. In the well, business, in the business, they understand. There's not a, in the yeah, business, well, not they really. Understand. There's a lot of wars in the business. Where, yeah, like, for where? now, knocking on wood, it's doing good. <laughs> because you know, some people, some they, people, they think they know everything. Satuto. Satuto. Okay. Satuto. 
sanamente. Poor Johnny. Poor Jimmy. Oh, no. <laughs> and, they, and, and they always tell you what to do. All the time. It's okay. This happens. You know, it's normal. It's normal. You know. yeah, it's normal. The only time he leaves me alone is when I act. True. Okay. Good. He never, he never gets involved. Because he's a fan of mine. He likes my work. So thank God I don't have a mate. That's going to critique me and tell me I'm a lousy actor. And he doesn't bother me when I'm. He doesn't do when I'm. I'm a fucking genius. My father would say, "Suit you do, because it's fair." So I saw you uh, had a meeting with Joe Williamson. So when you see him, say hi. We love Joe yes. Williamson. Really yes. great. He's guy. my manager for many years, seven years, eight years. Great so, guy. And, wonderful uh, guy. You see Don Isaac's been on the show a bunch, and Ron did a low-budget movie with Don oh, I seen last her. year. She's and, such a uh, character. And she is a talk. She's so much fun. The scene, we were in the car, okay? And it was supposed to be on the ice. And the camera's behind me, and they want me to go straight. I said, wait a minute. We're on the ice. I'm from New York. I know what it's like to drive on ice. So I started doing this. And swaying all over. I got well, 35 miles an hour. <laughs> she was screaming like you can't believe. A real scream. Real scream. <laughs> so when you see the movie, Donna's not fake acting. She was terrified. She said, Good to know. <laughs> no, Good to know. And, and my producer said, you're crazy. I said, no, not. I'm an actor. That's and, how we drive. And this is real. So you know what? They added the snow and the ice to it. And he said, Ron, it's wonderful. Very good. Oh, totally. that, that, the, the important thing is what's on film. That's right. You get the feeling that the car is going to crash and you're going to be killed. So yeah. here's something I like That's to ask people. You, you've worked with tons of, of great celebrities, great stars, people who really know how to act. You know, I love the fact that, you know, um, not, not to knock anybody. I know that everybody, like, uh, crowdfunds, you know, for their movies. It's not something I get involved in. I, I don't believe in it. Um, and I don't believe in you know, letting people pay to be an actor because that's, no. that's why my movie sucks. No, no, so I want to give you kudos. You know, you came from a foreign country. You work with great actors, and you don't have to go through that model. Um, Thank you. That's uh, why your movie will be good. I keep telling the Mall Brothers. <clears throat> I have to do this delicately. Um, <laughs> some of the people you have in it were so fucking bad, they ruined the movie. And they made me feel... I didn't want to see it anymore. I understand you need the money, but don't have these people. I mean, that, sometimes there's they're selling Besha, you know, fish monger, fish salesman, and they're coming into the movie. There's like 50 because, people with one line that have nothing to do with the movie. But they <laughs> yeah. ruin the scene. They ruin because if I have to enter a scene and go, hey, you, come over here, and Ujadrul stands there. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I, I know you do. So you've worked with some really great people. So here's a question I like to ask all the different people who come on. And since you're more of a director, we'll, we'll do it as a director. Uh, um, I look forward to meeting you in person. So it's Any a time. question. Male and female you actor. Male and female actor that you have not had an opportunity to work with that you would love to work with. And they could be living or dead. It doesn't okay. matter. And then the second part of the question would be if you could have directed well, any do it one of the time. Oh, wait, okay. but yeah, that way he can be thinking about it. If you can if you could have directed any movie ever made in history, what movie would you have liked to direct? Okay. The actor I would really like to work and uh, I spoke with the manager a few times is Nicolas Cage. That Great. would be Nicolas someone... Cage, the worst actor in Hollywood. I love Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I love Why did you pick Nicolas Cage? Did you ever see the do you ever see the violin? Yes, but it's a great actor. And you it's still think he's an actor? <laughs> he's a great actor. He's a great actor. I like him too. He doesn't like him. I, like I, him. I love Nicholas Cage. No, I I you. Nobody in the business likes him. They all talk that he's a bad. My he, Nicholas Cage plays. I didn't have his own opinion. <laughs> no, no, he plays Nicholas Cage all the time, over and over again, and it's not good. He was way over the top in that Ren. What did you think of Renfield? It was too over the Renfield, top. Renfield, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Okay, it's not good. You won't like I it. Mean, I don't want to say anything against Nicolas Cage, but he wants four million. No, two million. Two million now? Well, actually, wants less if he likes the screenplay. So okay, that's good. Yes, 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 yeah. That's well, something that actually man, the manager and I call. Oh, good for you, Max. Max. Get him. He's good. Max. Max. 
get him and you direct him and maybe then he'll be a good actor. The movie that he was really good for me, which a movie that I would have loved to direct, is Eight Millimeters. I don't know if you Oh, wow. Know. Yes, yes. Wow. That's a movie that I really would have loved to direct. Right. That's the snuff movie, right? That's the snuff that, movie. It's a story about the snuff movie. Yes, yeah, story about a snuff no, movie. You don't just like Nicholas because he's Italian. No, 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 no. I like him because he's, for me, he's a very good actor. First of all, 8mm was a great, and I know from all the movies I produced that, that distribution wise, he's gold. You know? Yes, yes, that's he's correct. That's he's correct. Very good for distribution. I, I like Nicolas Cage in the movie about the uh, tombs where they were going looking for the treasure. <laughs> that's a oh, great movie. That was his best part. I like that. Watch, watch 8mm, great movie, great performance by him. There is Peter Stormare. Playing the villain, James no, no, Gunn. I, I, I love that. Movie. I love that. Movie. I think Nicholas Cage did an excellent job in the movie. National, just, treasure. National Treasure. Okay, so what about a female? Because he didn't overact. He kept it at a, a distance. Nobody's ever picked Nicholas Cage, just so Never. you know, and nobody's ever oh. picked Eight Millimeters. So you're, uh, and 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 hopefully, Did I see Eight Millimeters? No, I don't know if you would like it. Watch it. Watch good. it. It's a very good movie. I don't want to watch a snuff movie. It's about a snuff movie. No, no, it's about, it's That's about. A, well, it's not an actual, you know, okay. killing So hang on. Well, we can't tell you what happens. But <laughs> so wait, wait, so female, and this will determine who is. Who, Christina who, Ricci will have been nice to Oh, you. that's awesome. <laughs> Nobody's ever picked her. And you know what? She's a good little actress. She's very, a, very. I'm so glad you picked her. Everybody picks Meryl Streep, and we're both like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> There's a wonderful actress, an English actress. Uh, my honey, I'm sure I love her. Which one do you like? From, 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 from the, the English. He likes Helen Mirren. Oh, I love Helen Mirren. Oh, Helen Mirren, yes. It's very good. Still to work with Helen Mirren. Very good. One I think Charlie's is. Charlie Stearon, you like? No, the, my English one. Dougherty. Oh, Michelle Doher. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle Dougherty is probably one of the greatest actresses we have today. We have a lot of good actors, actresses, lots. Well, but she's supreme because I saw her in Downtown Abbey where she played a sophisticated woman. And then I saw her in a television series where she played a prostitute, drug addict, kleptomaniac, murderer, Dope attic in American so language. Good. It was all good. She was unbelievable. How that girl can use an American accent. How she went from being the grand lady Mary to una putana is amazing. <laughs> I mean, she's a. I, I would kill twice. I'd kill to work with Michelle Dougherty. I only want her on our show. <laughs> Thanks, Max. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what, 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 no, we can't mention it on the air. What? Nobody no, likes her. Yeah. Nobody likes her, man. I, I'm glad you said that though, because fucking total cunt. Um, really. Anybody who works with her hates her. So. Yeah, no, I like it, and she doesn't. You know, uh, she's one of the reasons why you and I have never met them before. Because that's she, correct. I know that. She told me bad things about you. When she I told know. me bad things about you, uh, I believed her, and now I know that she's full of shit with everything she says. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, so right. been friends this? before. Your your old girlfriend. We don't mention names like that. My right? old girlfriend. Yes, yeah, the one that you thought maybe you were going to be walking down the aisle. Anyway, don't oh, mention it. I was it. playing her father. No. Anyway, we, I would be walking down the aisle. What the fuck? I'm not in, a, you, in real life. Yeah. We'll tell you after in private. We'll tell you in private after. Wait, wait. I would get married. I, I was married. No more. No. Never <clears> mind. <throat> we'll tell you later. Anyway, so I want to go back. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I love it. Remember. Oh, that one. <laughs> you know what? I have nothing but regret. Me too. Because everybody who worked I, with that person I mean, I truly has regrets. Loved, I loved her. I thought she was my best, dearest friend in the world. I really loved her. It was not fake Hollywood. The man in the back. Shwing. Yeah. No, I. I you know what? <clears throat> I used to call her my daughter because I have two daughters, and. At her birthday party, she sat on my lap and she whispered in my ear. She said, Ron, promise me you'll live to be 150. And I thought that was so Karina, so wonderful. And then, it, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? 
I don't blame her. I don't blame her. I do. Emata. Oh, a oh, little nuts. Oh, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that to be mean. I know. No, it's the truth. I know her so, background. I know her family. I know her background too, but that she, doesn't justify anything. Over, over no, you're right. Over and I'm mess. glad you brought that up, actually, because that gives me. She, she, just, over, over the it's terrific. Because I think we would have been she, friends a long time ago if it wasn't. For absolutely, that. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I also think so. In the chat room, they're writing Nicolas Cage played Superman in the New Flash, and that he was he was excellent. In it. Did you see the New Flash? I didn't see. I it. did not see. I don't like Flash. I did not see. Okay. It. Do, do you not like watch any of the? Uh, do you watch Marvel movies at all? I bet not. I I don't actually. I don't. I'm one of the few directors who doesn't watch Marvel movies. I'm. A, I was a good friend with James Gunn, the director, for many yes. years when we worked together in Trauma back in '97. But then we, we split apart. But he's a good he's a good director, very good. But Marvel movies, of course, if I get hired to do a Marvel movies, I will take it immediately. Okay. I will love to do Doctor okay. Doom. <laughs> you know? I, I, know, I know you're young, but I'm not young. But thank you. Well, younger than I. When I was young, I went to see Boccaccio Seventy with Sophia Loren, and also La Dolce Vita with Anita Ekberg. And I remember when I left the movie theater after seeing Anita Ekberg, I was so in love with her. I thought she had the best pair of tits in the world, that she was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Crazy about her. Then I go see Boccaccio 70 with Sophia Loren, and I'm crazy about Sophia Loren. But guess what? I turned 19 years old, and I'm in a movie called That Kind of Woman. Starring Sophia Loren, and I got to meet Sophia Loren. Oh, on the oh yeah. I went and sat down next to her in the like, folding chair, and I'm speaking Italian. And you know what she said to me? Don't, don't talk with me. Don't speak Italian because your Italian is as bad as my English. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget that. And one of the guys came over to me and he said, "I was a soldier." He said, "Soldier." Leave Miss Lauren alone. And you know what she said? No, 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 let him stay. She liked me because I was Rolando and I was Italian. Of course, and of every course. Italian I spoke, she she got a kick out of it. And I, I couldn't, I have never gotten over it and I never will get over it. She's probably one of the most beautiful women I have ever seen in my life. What do you think about those two movies I just mentioned, Boccaccio? Mm -hmm. Very good movies. Did the seeker influence you a little bit? No, nothing. Not Maybe even Dario Argento. Argento. Uh, La Dolce Vita, I watch it, but I think Argento back in the days and Baba influenced me. At the Fellini beginning. was Argento, yes. What did you think of oh, Fellini? Oh, wait, what did you think of Fellini? I'm the only Italian who doesn't like Fellini. So. I don't either. <laughs> I'm not Italian. He, he was way out. For me, way he out. was way, way out. out. Way out. Mm -hmm. way out. So here's what you got to do, because we only have a couple, uh, like two minutes left. So number one, which movies are where are they playing? Where can people go? Tell yes. us what movies that you've okay. got. Oh my God. All my movies are available everywhere, thanks to Lionsgate. They can be seen on Fandango, on uh, um, uh, Amazon. If you have a console like Xbox, PlayStation, they can be seen there. So it, they're pretty much everywhere. Just have to, awesome. to look. My old, old movies are on Tubi. All my movies pre-2000 are on Tubi. So if you want to watch my old, old movies that they made for, you know, a uh, shoestring budget, you can watch them too. How many movies have you actually done, do you know? 28, I believe. 28. Congratulations. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Happy we had you on the show. Uh, grande you know, piacere a mio. Grazie. We've done a bunch of, um, of, of cast of cast shows of movies. So if like in Dra Drama Awards or somewhere, you want to bring a bunch of the cast on, you know, we can conversation. We did that for um, all Marcel Waltz's films and a couple of the Mahal Brothers. Marcel films. Waltz, very talented. No, we are, we're friends on Facebook. We talk sometimes. Yes, yeah. Marcel. Marcel, he did a beautiful job with Blind. Uh, now, Marcel Waltz has a good, uh, European, you know, German. He's got a good eye. Good eye. Yes, I love it. So you guys, this is Max. You can follow him on Instagram. Please check out all his films. Uh, the Bouncer, Bloodthirst, Adrenaline, Lockdown, 
Painkiller, the penthouse made it. There's a bunch more, and you'll look to see more stuff. We'll have you back when you come. When you've got more stuff to promote, we'll bring you back. I loved having you on. Definitely. Thank you so much. All the best to you and your friends. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you Saturday, next Saturday. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Saturday. You go back to Italy soon. Eight years is no good. Too too long to be away. Let's from go. You. Let's go all together. Let's go. Yes, absolutely. I, 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 well, we're going to the Cannes Film Festival. Next okay. year. Next year. So then I'm going to fly. With I'm, gonna, films. I'm going to fly over to Germany. <laughs> my, my sales agent is there. My sales oh, agent. Okay, you don't need to go. Actually, we could drive from Khan to Genoa to visit my. Yes, cousin. actually, yes, actually, yes. Hi, okay. right, my. Yeah. Back to, how do I say your last name again? Cherky. 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 All right, everybody. So wait, congratulations. Wait, wait, Cherky. Is that like Cherkare to look for? It's like Cherky rounds. Oh, oh, no charity. Oh, so, Max Cherky, you guys, congratulations on all your success. So happy to have you on. And we'll Thank see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, you guys, so we're going to take a quick music break and then we're bringing in our next guest. You see how we are tired this is, of loving each other. This is Mimi Fox. The name of the song is Cross My Heart. It's from the film That's a Rap that's now on Tubi by Marcel Waltz. Enjoy it, and we're going to bring come back with our next guest, James Stokes. Fox. The name of the song is Cross My Heart. It's from the That's a Rap soundtrack, and the movie is now on Tubi. And, um, and, and I had news for you. The first time I've heard it, it's great. It's a good, like a disco yeah, song. Yeah, it's a good song. And the movie, of course, is wild and outrageous, and I loved it. Love it. I mean, I didn't love a lot of the blood, but 
I love the story. So and, now we're going to bring And of on, course, all my friends are in it. We're going to bring on James Stokes. Bring him in. James Stokes. Where hey, are you? what's up? How you doing? Hey, guys. I'm doing good. How are y'all? We good, are fantastic. Good, good, good. And we're happy to have you. you guys, this is James Stokes. Uh, he was on the show. I don't know if that was this year or that was last year. No, it was last year. Yeah, it's been it's been over a year. It's been right at a year, maybe or longer. Yeah. yeah. So how y'all? Stuff since then. And you had the courage yeah. to come back on again. Absolutely, I love you guys. Absolutely. So first especially all, when especially when you got Max on. Good lord! I mean, I haven't seen Max since I was in Romania with him, and we oh. did Adrenaline together. So. That's right. He want he he said to make sure we say hi to you. So Max yeah. says hello to you. Max says hi. And uh, yeah. and James says hello to you, Max. And actually, absolutely. Uh, hey Juan, is Jay, is is Max still there? Bring him back for a second if he's still there, and they can say hi. There you go. Hey James. James. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have five dollars. You owe me five dollars. <laughs> Little inside okay. joke there between me and Max. There, that's that's great. That's back in yeah. the Romanian days. I have to explain explain your five dollar Romanian joke to us, though. <laughs> it's it's a stupid joke that we had every time something happened. It was like James five dollar, so, <laughs> five dollar, five dollar. Okay. So it was it was, so it was fun. fun. It was fun. I'll okay. tell you though, on, on a serious note though, about Max, one one of the best uh, directors I've ever worked with. Uh, I love, uh, no, absolutely. I mean, when they brought me over to Romania, I didn't know what to expect. He made me feel, he made me feel just at ease as far as being in front of the camera and letting me be um, myself and letting me take hold of the character and all that stuff. And I hope I did it justice for him. And, and yeah, that's a 20. I'll you take them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'll want change. It's called it, it was called Adrenaline. We shot it in over in, in uh, Bucharest, Romania. And uh, Adrenaline, yes, sir. And uh, Max was the director on it. And uh, it was just absolutely an amazing time. It's, um, and like I said, Max was just a just great to work with and work for. And uh, any time that that man asked me to do anything, I'd be there for him. Absolutely. Let's go. For free. Okay. Also yeah, advice. not not for free though. No more for free. You're gonna pay me a lot of five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I've always wanted to work with an Italian director, and I have oh my never, goodness, you know. Yes. So I, I'm looking forward to one. You know, listen, I have a couple of movies coming up that are gonna shoot me to stardom, and then he's gonna beg for me. Give me a, <laughs> he's gonna give me a million dollars a picture and my name over the title. So hang on, hey. guys. <laughs> hang on, real quick, you guys. So we have another fan, and she lives in Bakersfield. Her name's Dawn Hinton, and she watches everything that everybody who comes on the show does. Um, her name is Dawn. So Max, first, you say hello, Dawn, please. Hi, Dawn. How are you? Thanks there for you watching. Go. And then you, James, say hey to Dawn. Hey, Dawn. How are you? Thank hey. you for watching our stuff. She wanted to get it all in there. All yeah, right. What are you in a car or an airplane? What the hell are you? I am. I'm in my car. Yeah. I'm, I'll be What's headed that? to Iowa City here soon. So yeah. That's, it looks like an airplane. Yeah. What kind of car is? It? No, it's it's a car. It's my it's my SUV. Yeah. And why are you going to Iowa City to sign autographs? Uh, uh, yep, I have a film festival, a four-day film festival out there. They're going to be showing our films. Uh, I'll be setting up a booth out there um, for Jason Voorhees and selling some of my mask and pictures and stuff. And uh, I'm looking real. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun time, fun weekend. Well, has your life changed since you were on our show? You uh, got to more. No, your private, yes. your private life. No, his life has changed because he's been in a ton of movies since no, he was no, on no, the show. That, that Life, life, life has changed big time. I, I've gotten some really good roles. I've gotten some really good uh, conventions no, no, that I'm in. We don't want to hear about your career. We want to hear about your private life. <laughs> you know, yes. We have women out there that just plugged in their vibrators when they saw your muscular arms. If you guys so, really want to see him, follow him on Instagram. So, you know, all those ladies now are having fantasies about being in that Jeep with you. So All of this is. All of this is for Max. Nobody else. That's it. That's oh, it. Wait, wait, wait. You guys, you go on Instagram. You guys follow Stokes.James1414. He posts all yes. kinds of pictures of him in the gym without a shirt and all that shit. Whoa, he's, he's super man. buffed. He's super Woo. buffed, you guys, like a, like a superhero. And uh, I mean, the women are going nuts. I hear the vibrators from here. <laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all are crazy. I love, I love, I love you guys. Apparently, you know. you got a girlfriend. What happened in the UFC? Where's um, and the, yeah, a lot, lots changed. Um, a uh, lot's changed. I've taken, um, I've taken on, like I said, several more roles. Uh, as far as personal life goes, nothing's changed there. I mean, I'm, I'm still just trying to dig my feet in and be a, a, as much of a professional actor as I possibly can be and uh, doing everything that I can to make myself better at what I do at my craft. What about those cold, lonely nights? Uh, you know what? Put the blanket on. I, ex <laughs> there you go, Max. I just throw another blanket on. You know, you know it's what, just... James, I could tell you're not an Italian. <laughs> I, no, no, I'm, I'm a southern Italian. If that's what you want to call me. Southern <laughs> men can't go four hours without sex. <laughs> right, Max? James is very reserved. He's very, very gentleman from the south. You know, it's a really oh, good actor. Oh, shit. No, he is, first of all, though. Oh, shit. So here's something I learned. A piece of ass walked in a room. He jumped like here's a Here's something I didn't know about James, though. The last time he came on, so he used to be a professional rodeo person, like right I did. I, like they did. I did. Um, did the girls throw panties at you then? <laughs> that that was definitely a woman getter, yeah. I was I rode bulls and barebacks. Uh, but but in horses, but uh, yeah, I did that for five years. International Pro Rodeo Association. Uh, it it it, uh, it is just something that I'm adrenaline junkie, I guess you would say. No, no pun meaning to adrenaline, but I'm adrenaline junkie. I'm adrenaline junkie, and uh, it's just um, I, everything that I do, as y'all know, and as you watch my career, everything that I do, I do it at a hundred percent. I'm not going to go into anything half-assed. I'm not going to go in saying I'm just going to do the minimum job. It's just like going to Romania. I'm going to I'm going to go over there and I'm going to give my best performance in front of the camera every time, and I'm going to be ready. I'm going to know my lines, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to I'm going to be the best I can be for any director that I'm in front of. So it only took one hundred takes. No, I'm joking. Only took <laughs> one hundred takes. No, I'm joking. <laughs> one hundred takes. You watch Yellowstone? Have you ever seen that show, Yellowstone? I have. I've actually auditioned for Yellowstone four times already. Oh, they got to get you on there. Like, I don't know if it's still going to be going, but it is the greatest show on television. Like, it one hundred percent is. And I, being a professional equestrian, you know, I've shown the the casting director that I can ride a horse, that I know how to to be around a horse. I've I've been around horses all my life, horses, cattle, everything on the farm, and so I pride myself on learning. If, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to learn everything about that before I call myself a professional. And I can call my, myself a professional equestrian because I know everything there is to know about a horse. I like so, the of Max, do you watch Yellowstone? Max, do you watch Yellowstone? No, of course, of course, of course. Of course. Such a, I've yes. seen it before yeah. now. It's such a good show. I love it to death. Uh, I think it's terrific. Um, all right, so how about, Max, we're going to let you go and just talk to yes, James please. a little bit. Hi, James, it was a pleasure again. Max. Yes. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye bye. All right, you guys. So, so now we're back with James, and uh, Max is great, and I think it's really cool that you had an opportunity to work with that. And when I asked you to come on, I didn't even know that until I was like researching his movies. Uh, yeah, I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool when I saw that Max was going to be on too. I thought, oh man, you know, I haven't seen him or talked to him. In, well, we we keep up with each other on Facebook, but we haven't really talked a whole lot. He's a busy guy, and so am I. So. Uh, we just uh, kind of just cross paths every now and then, but it was nice to see him and get to talk to him again. So you guys, James, the last time he was on, he had kind of like started building his name as Jason Voorhees. The name of the movie that you were in was Voorhees Night of the Beast. And yes. That has really opened a lot of doors for you, hasn't it? That has opened so many doors for me. It is still opening doors for me, just like this Iowa City thing. They're showing our film three different times this weekend and having Q&As and, and doing all that stuff down there. Uh, and this is the thing, though, Jimmy. I, I, don't want to be, I don't want to be just Jason Voorhees. I, I want people to know me as an actor. I just premiered a movie here in Nashville called Child of Love with Eric Roberts, uh, Ciara Hanna from the power rangers and stuff it, it's it's a movie about a down syndrome child uh and the family how she um uh, started a school for down syndrome kids i played a preacher in it 
Uh, Eric Roberts played a doctor in it, and it's going to be a very, very good movie. We just premiered it uh, three weeks ago, Tuesday. And so it's, um, we're looking forward to that coming out. Um, so, oh, well, no, like, I, I'm like looking down, you know, I see uh, you have a movie at, at the end of the Santa Fe Trail, Just One Life, mm -hmm. Choose, Great White Throne Judgment was a TV movie, a fan yes. film, Batman, Heart of Ice, where you play Deathstroke. Reunion from Hell 1 and 2 with Mark Patton and Lisa Wilcox. They've both been on the show. Uh, yep. Soldier Secret, The Macabre. Um, like you have actually, like since you were on the show, you've done a really a lot of a lot of stuff. I've done a lot of stuff. And, and I'm still, and I'm going back, the, the director for The Macabre, uh, he has asked me back for Infernal, and that's in Las Vegas. Um, uh, this week, uh, no, I'm this week, at the 1st of November, I'm going to Decatur, Illinois, to shoot the uh, true story about Derek Lee Todd, a serial killer. He was a serial killer. Uh -huh. It was a true story, and I'm going to be. I'm pretty sure y'all know who Bishop Stevens is. Yes. Well, I'm going to be. I'm going to be in there with him, and so with him and a couple of other um, great actors and stuff that I'm looking forward to working with. And so I'm going to be playing one of the lead detectives in in that show. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so I've got. Yeah, like, how do people find you? I, like, do you have an agent? Are they coming to you, or how how's it working? I, I do. I do have an agent. I do have an agent, uh, Larry Hurley, out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he's doing phenomenal for me. Uh, and uh, in a couple of weeks here in Nashville, actually, I'm going to be with the Dukes of Hazard. Pretty much, I'm going to be with Catherine Bach and to uh, Tom Wolpat and John Snyder, and we're going to be up here. We've had John. Uh -huh. Twice. Yeah, John's John's a great guy. I was with him at the CMA Fest down in Nashville this year, where we raised money for the Children's Hospital here at Vanderbilt, and we, I think we raised about sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars in a four-hour span. Where um, are you? You're in Tennessee. I'm in Nashville right now. Yes, I'm in Nashville. Where mm -hmm. do you live, or where do you actually live? Uh, a little a North Nashville called Hendersonville. I live right right in uh, North Nashville. A, a little town called Hendersonville. It ain't little anymore. But. I actually have a column. There's a, a publication in Nashville called the Nashville Music Guide, and I actually have a column on it. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, cool. Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm in that, and I've um, um, the Huckabee Show. There's a Huckabee Show here. Have you ever heard of that? The no, Huckabee it's Show. Not. It's where Twitty City is here in Hendersonville. I'm thinking. I just got uh, talked to the other day about coming on that show, the Huckabee Show, and that's a nationwide show as well. So I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm big in the movies. I mean, the country music scene here. You're not you know, the music scene is fabulous. You're not doing though a whole lot of horror. Then really, you've done some kind of horror, but you're really like starting to expose. You have a look that you know fits for everything. Yes. You know? Well, thank you. Uh, yes, but I am branching out and doing a lot of other things besides just horror. Uh, so, uh, but I love the horror genre. I would probably say that's my favorite genre to do. I think making horror films is, uh, well, they're just fun. I mean, they're just fun. You know, you get to shoot a lot at night, and you get you get a lot of leadway. You know, a lot of a lot of liberty freedoms, liberty freedoms, or li freedom liberties, whatever you'll call it. But you, it just it's just fun to make a horror film. So well, it's it's. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, have you worked in television yet? I have worked in television a little bit. You know, of course, I, I was on Stranger Things. I I was uh I was with on Netflix. Uh, that's a TV show. Uh, did a, did some work with them. Um, um, the Calling of Lizzie McBride. I was uh, back in the 1920s. I was a cop, or uh, supposed to have been a detective looking for moonshiners back in then. I did that. Uh, there's there's been several different things. All the uh, on the oxygen network and the ion network i've done mark of a killer i've done snapped i've done i've done several ghost shows and stuff tv shows and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. different television to the horror movies mm -hmm. really, yeah so television is tough so they don't it's like very you tough you, you don't get away with anything last week we actually no. had uh adam marcus on and adam marcus is the writer and the director of jason goes to hell the final friday right. the 13th whatever, <laughs> whatever and yeah uh, and he was very cool. Like we had a, a wonderful time you fun, know, talking fun, with him on the show. show. He also did Texas Chainsaw 3D, right. um, where he wrote it and, and everything. Anyway, his name was Adam Marcus, and he was very cool. And it made me think. That's what made me think about you to come on this week was the fact. Oh wow! You know that we. I was. He was Jason, and you you've been Jason. 
yeah, two weeks ago, I was out in uh, Denver, Colorado, at the horror, the Colorado Horror Festival there. And me and John, do you know? Do y'all know John Dugan? Have y'all had him on? We have not had him on, but I do know who he is. Well, me and John, we we flew out to Denver together. John lives here in Nashville as well, and this was his first con in Denver, and this was my second time. So, me and him went out there and did that uh, convention together, and then flew back. And John is just a great, great friend of mine. Me and him's done several movies together now, and um, what, John, yeah, I just from like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Isn't that what he's? Was... Yeah, he was the, he was the grandfather in all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so and that was Angela Joseph was at that convention, right? Oh, uh, yes. Time. Yeah, thanks for what? Yes. Mm -hmm. Angela, because that's Angie. how we actually met him, is Angie. Angie, baby, say hi to Give her a hug if you see her from me. Oh, God, I always hug her when I see her. I love, I love her to death. Yeah. This hug is from Ron Russell. I oh, sure will. I haven't seen Angie in a long time. Oh, my God, she's amazing. She's great. Every, um, everybody's so busy doing nothing because of the strike. None of us are working. Uh, sure. No. Yeah. Only the non-SEGs are working. Yeah. But the SEGs, we, we're not working. So, right. So let's go back to your, because now you've done two fan films. You did a Batman one, Batman Heart of Ice, where you played Deathstroke. Yeah. So I'm a huge Batman fan. I have a zillion fat Batman action figures, like all different. Even the one year for Christmas, he even got me like a four-foot one. I have like a four-foot Batman. <laughs> a classic yeah. I give him toys for um, his birthday. Too. Uh, everybody knows that. That's my thing. So, um, and I and I actually was in a Batman fan film a long time ago, but I don't know what happened to, to it. I don't know if it even ever came out. Yours probably came out. And and uh, so, tell us a little bit about about the Batman fan film. Well, uh, the Batman fan film, as far as my character goes, Deathstroke, I come in at the very very end of it because. He is making another movie, which is going to be a whole lot of Deathstroke. So this next movie that he's going to do, I will be a very prominent figure in that in that next film. And uh, another reason why I'm trying to stay in good shape is because of roles like that right there. Because I want people, to, you know, I, I mean, again, my character or whatever character I play, I want to portray it as best as I can. You know, some people say, well, you know, playing a, uh, a Western, in a Western, your muscles are going, you know, they didn't look like that back in the 1800s. Well, with the shirts and stuff that they could put on me or that I wear, uh, you, you don't, I can hide this very well. I mean, you can't hide my shoulders a whole lot, but I mean, you, you can, you can hide, you know, muscles and stuff like that. But um, uh, yeah, I, I have tattoos. That's the most important thing. Do you have tattoos? Right. I just have, I just as of right now I just have one on my upper arm here so yeah so that's it so that's one thing they ask uh, if you're going to have anything that a period piece where you're wearing a costume that reveals tattoos I don't have a tattoo on me so I put that in my uh, what is it called my uh, description your bio description yeah, like bio no tattoos not yeah. that they yeah. not that they don't want me to show my body <laughs> trust me you right. gotta, just in case they want to be dead, they don't have to cover up my tattoos. How tall are you? I'm 6'2". Okay, so do you ever watch that show Reacher? Have you ever seen that show Reacher? I think I have cool. seen it. I have seen Reacher. Uh, I know what you're talking about. That dude kind of, you, you remind me of kind of him and the roles that he plays, you know, and he's played oh. some awesome roles. Um, yes, he does. <laughs> You, um, he's a big guy. He's a big guy too. Yeah. yeah, he's a big guy, all muscular. It's a great show. Yeah. It's, the show is great, and he's you know he's a superhero. He's like Angel, I don't know, the guy with the wings. I don't, I don't know what his name is, but but he's someone who's becoming very prominent. He was also in in uh, I think he was in Fast X. Yeah, he was just in Fast X. So he's I think so too going way on up. But I I kind of see you playing those kind of roles as you get. You, you, don't see more play, you don't see me playing those kind of. Well, not the ones that like, I'm six one. I mean, I made the height. Yeah, but look, look at the. Oh, let's see. Well, he's got nothing compared to me. <laughs> right, those arms are something. How often do you have to? Watch, how often do you watch work out? My arms. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How often? How often do you work out? Like every day? I work out six days a week. Yes, I do. And now, you know, when I say that, I work out different muscle groups every day. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I work out six days a week. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I like love it. So I want to play the trailer real quick. We, I, I had him. Do uh, Voorhees Night of the Beast trailer. Um, so how about yep. you produce this for, and then Juan, you play the trailer for us, just so people can see the, the film that got it started for him. And um, 
uh, introduce it and we'll play it and just hang on. We'll be right back. Okay. Well, guys, this, this is the trailer for Voorhees Night of the Beast where I play Jason Voorhees. Look, Mark has not, he hasn't slept through the night since he's moved in with me. <sighs> this is a bad idea. You ready to do this? You shouldn't go in there. Yeah, if you go, you're doomed. You're all doomed! You don't think he's really out there, do you? All I know is there's been a shit ton of bodies out there over the years. I'm more inclined to believe the legend than not. That's a fairly expensive question, John. I'm not sure you want to pay that price. Go to hell, you son of a bitch! Watch your car. Give me a hand. I we'll find more bodies. Yeah, I think so. Ron's asking me how many people do we know that play Jason? Because we've had almost every Jason. I think everybody on our show um, played Jason. You know, uh, I was really good friends with Steve. Uh, oh, shit, I forgot his name. But he played Jason in the first movie, like in the first movie, where he doesn't actually have a mask, where he has the straw thing on his head. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ken Kersinger. We recently had CJ, Grandma. I don't know. We've, had, we've had almost every Jason on the show, I think. And um, and now we've had a couple of people who wrote some of those movies. I just uh, had a meeting with um, Sean Cunningham, who created Jason uh, uh, in the original. So it, it's a fun. And I have a six foot Jason in my well, not right now because it's packed up. But I have a six foot Jason that you plug it in, it it swings the machete and makes the noise. You know that. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, in my office. So I like love it, yeah. and I think it's. I mean, so. Cause I know you've done a lot of different things. Like I read on your bio, you were a disc jockey for five years. You were an EMT. Are you still an EMT? I'm not. I let that lapse a long time. Well, about three and a half, four years ago, I let that lapse. Um, it's just, um, I, I know I won't be going back to that job. So, um, I just went ahead and, and keep it up your, your, all your cards and everything for that. It was just getting to be too much with me being gone as much as I'm gone. So I just went ahead and let that lapse. I did it for 16 years and uh, it was a, a very rewarding job, but it was also a very hard job dealing with death and, and stuff almost every shift. And so I don't know, it, it, it was a, it's a very demanding job for, for, for a person, especially with kids and stuff like that. So. I want to say something way off what we're talking about. I want to thank you for wearing that T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I love America, too. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going through some hard times in America right now. And, um, you know, you know, know an American flag, and I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing that on our show. Because, you know, Absolutely. we go all over the world. Five million people watch our show. And I want them to know that there are Americans who do love the country and who are not Absolutely. like some of the assholes that are out there right now protesting against yeah. the war in Israel. Or, or going yeah. forward, I mean, not protesting, God no. The people that are loving it, they're saying wonderful. So yeah. were you in the military? Yeah. Sir? Looks like you would have been in the military. Were you in the military? Oh. I was in the military, yes. Yeah, so. I can't hear you, Jim. Hang on, we can oh, hear See if you're, uh, uh, see if the... the you moved and you might have disconnected. <laughs> oh, can, can you hear me now? We can't hear you. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, Juan, you got any suggestions? Uh, Juan says he can hear him, but we can't hear him. How come we can't? Okay, hang on. Maybe something happened on our end. Hold on. All right, now go. Can you hear me now? 
Yeah. yeah, how wild is that? Our our volume got turned all the way down, and I haven't touched the computer. <laughs> okay. You know, um, no, no, no. The communists are all over. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, the, yeah. The communists cut you off. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, nothing happened. I went and played. Uh, I went to play football at Western Kentucky University after I got out of the Marines. And um, after that, I became, um, I was working at a factory for a while. And then I w went on to become an EMT firefighter and did that for the last 16 years. And then, uh, so yeah, I haven't had a whole lot of big jobs in my life because once I get a job, I, I kind of tend to keep it. That's just a generation that I am. And being, uh, yeah. I grew up watching my father, you know, work relentlessly at the same job for as long as I can remember. I, it was just a work work ethic that I took a hold of, and so did all my brothers and and stuff, and my sisters, and we just kind of did the same thing. Once you get a job, you do that job to the best of your ability, and and uh, and keep it. There's no reason to jump around from job oh, to job; man. it's harder. So you mean you don't believe in getting things for free? One hundred percent. You have to work for everything that you get in this life, and 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 that's where this that's where America has got its downfall. We everybody's a winner now, and you can't be everybody can't be a winner. Yeah, but and, unfortunately, unfortunately, we have a lot of people here who think that they deserve everything for free. Yes, there's a lot of lot of people that think they are entitled. Yeah, they do, entitled. entitled. That's yes. Yeah, so I'm yes, I'm a hardworking American. So is Jimmy. So were my parents and my great parents. So is James. And my great parents yeah. came from Italy. And when they came here from Italy, they learned the language and they went to work. They expected nothing. And they worked very hard. And I am who I am because I stand on their shoulders. Are you from Kentucky? Right. And so do you. I could tell uh, that you're standing on your dad's shoulders. Absolutely. I am from Kentucky, Jimmy. I, I'm, I was born and raised in. Uh, well, I was born in, in, in Christian County, Kentucky, which is right outside of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, right close to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which is the Army base there, second largest Army base in the United States, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And so, um, yep, and I lived there pretty much all my life until I moved uh, 17 years ago to Nashville. Have you ever heard of Bowling Green? Isn't your father from Kentucky? Yeah. That's, my father that's, where, Green. that's where I went to school. I went to Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green. That's uh -huh. funny. That's so. That's where my uh, my father was raised. I used to go there in the summers. Uh, yeah. When I was a kid, because he has. Well, a you, you know, that's where all the streets are after on Halloween. You know, with Michael Myers. Yeah. All, all the streets are named after streets in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's because that's where he was from, John Carpenter. Uh, my so my cousins uh, have a band, and it's called Cage the Elephant. Um, and Casey hmm. Elton is a huge band from Bowling Green, and they're huge. Like they're on like the Tonight Show and they Grammys and all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, but I've never Everybody actually met them. Show? I haven't actually ever met, met them because you know my father passed away a long time ago, and and uh, they became famous like in the last ten years or something. Um, wow. But Bowling Green, like I used to love going there in the summers. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, well. I'm friends with a lot of uh, big name country artists here in, in Nashville. TG Shepard, one of the main ones. TG is like a, one of, I mean, we just, we do a lot. I do a lot for him. He does a lot for me, him and Kelly, Kelly Lang. Uh, they just are great people and has introduced me to, to some of the biggest names in, in music pretty much. And, you know, getting to hang around John Rich and, and uh, John Schneider and all those guys, from you know it, it's just it's just it's just great actually really good friends with john schneider's publicist because he's a because i'm a publicist and so we get along really well and um uh, have you ever met jason aldean i've never met jason aldean no but i've met a lot of the others i've, I've met luke bryan i've met luke combs I've, I've met a lot of the the bigger names are bigger name artists that are listen, out there right now listen do you listen to country music Oh, that's all I listen to. <laughs> yeah. Kentucky, Jimmy. That's... Kentucky, what else? Well, now he's in Nashville. No, just, you listen, never know. I, I have driven through Kentucky and Alabama, and you don't get anything but country music for hours. Pretty much. That's all you yeah. hear. And then when you get to Texas, you know, this is from driving from New York to L.A. When you get to Texas, then the shit-kicking music really comes out. <laughs> 
so I like country music, uh, uh, but I have to say, because I, 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 like, I'm a big guy, like Kid Rock. I used to, I dressed him a couple times as a celebrity clothing designer. I'm a big Kid Rock fan, and I like Jason Aldean. I didn't have any idea who he was until recently, but I really like him a lot. Uh, he was going to be playing here someplace, and we almost went to go see him, but it was in a field, and I can't sit like on a field because I got a bad knee. I got to have a seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jason. I love I love Jason's music. I absolutely love Jason. And uh, John, going back to John Snyder, I would love to work with John. You know, on screen sometime. You know, we're right here in Nashville, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get to be with him and and Tom and and Catherine. And Catherine actually is with my production team or my manager and stuff like that. So me and Catherine are actually going to sit down and talk next uh, in a couple of weeks and uh, actually go over some things that me and her, some promos that me and her are going to do together. And I mean, that that is just amazing to me because I grew up with Daisy Duke and John, and, you know, Luke. Bo and Luke Duke. I mean, so I am so excited about being at the same place with them, signing autographs and getting to meet people with them and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that that, that, that was a great. So we have a friend, Michael Damien, and his fa his his wife's father was the, uh, the, the father. James Best. James Best was the father. Oh, James Best. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, their father was on the show, and I've met Catherine okay. Bach, John Snyder, many, many times. Um, and I actually had a movie. We offered him a role, but the financing didn't fall through. And then, and then his wife passed away, um, Yeah, unfortunately. But uh, but he's a great guy, and he's like a great joke. guy. And he's a patriot, and I love it. I love all the things yes. that he does, and I think he's fabulous with it. So, so you guys, you can follow James on Instagram. It's stokes.james1414. If people want to see your whole film, the whole film of the Voorhees Night of the Beast, it's on YouTube, right? It is. Yep, YouTube. And then we got Night of the Beast, which is just a short film, pretty much just kind of tying some things together that was kind of – that we felt was left out of the first one. So we did a short film to tie some things together about Jason. And uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it, but you can watch Voorhees Night of the Beast and then Night After the Beast. I think both of them together is about an hour and 20 minutes tops. And then um, I have another one that I did in Cleveland, Ohio. It's called Slasherverse, and that's on YouTube as well. And I play Jason in that one too, but it's a combination of, Pretty much all the slasher films from Halloween to Friday the 13th to Ghost, Ghostface, Scream, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And so it, it's, it's a whole combination of all of them put together. They're short films as well. So that was really fun to do up in Cleveland. So yeah. I like love it. And you, how, many, uh, how many weekends a month are you off to go into conventions? A lot, aren't you? I, I don't – from here, from now, this weekend until October, I'm pretty much booked. I've got personal appearances at some haunted houses out of Atlanta. Uh, I'll be at another con in, in Fort Wayne, Indiana in two weeks. Uh, so, yeah, I've got, I've got things booked and stuff pretty much every weekend. I'm doing a veterans thing on um, – well, actually the same weekend that I'm doing it with Tom and Catherine and, and uh, John – I've got a veterans thing that I've got to kind of separate the two and go do some things because veterans are very big for me. Veterans and uh, yeah, yeah. I do a lot with uh, mental mental uh, health awareness um, with bullying, anti-bullying. I don't, I don't like, I don't like bullies. I don't, I don't, don't believe in it. I don't, I don't, I just don't like it at all. I go to schools, middle schools mainly, and I talk to middle school students and I use my mask. People always say, how do you use Jason masks to do that? Well, when you walk into a room full of kids that are about 12 to 13 to 14 years old and you got that mask on and you're as big as I am, they shut up. If I walked in there in another suit, if I walked in there in a suit or if I just walked in there just to talk to them, they don't want to, they don't want to listen to me. But when I walk in there with that mask on and that's usually how I do it, I go out in the hall and I put the mask on and I walk in. The kids just shut up and they listen to me. But that is a chance right now for me to tell them, look, guys, this is this right here is where you choose your friends that you're going to hang out with the next level at high school. Choose the good friends. I don't care if it only it's only one of them or if it's none of them. You choose the right people now, because once you get to high school, if you get in the wrong group of friends, you're going to go down a path that you don't want to. 
So I try to make sure that they understand that anti that bullying is wrong. And the, the, the friends that you choose now in your life as a middle school student, that's who you're going to be with the rest of your life. And I chose right. I chose some really good friends to be around. And I'm not saying that to say I'm better than everybody else. I'm saying that because the people that I chose, I wanted, I had something, my parents, my coaches, everything else. I wanted to make people proud of me. I wanted, I, and that's where I've always been. Even when I was in the field, digging up weeds in a potato field for my dad, I wanted to do it the best I could to make him proud of me. It's a very good, it's a very good yeah, story. I bet you, you get, this. We're no, time, I bet you get bullied a lot. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> you're so frail and skinny. Like <laughs> I mean, the bullies pick you up. They pick I'm, you up. Wait, good thing you have all those good friends go. from high school because they protect you, you little skinny no, I, runt. I, I agree with everything you say. We're basically out of time, so I have to cut you off. But oh, absolutely. Okay that you're doing is wonderful i'm so happy to know you but so thank you for that you came on the show today drive careful thank you have a good time congratulations on all your successes and we'll be in touch and if you need anything you let me know and jimmy, jimmy ron thank you hey uh -huh. jim you're okay in my book absolutely thank you ron i love i love you guys so much so have me on anytime thank you so much bye-bye all right everybody bye -bye, have a great jimmy. weekend we'll see you next week bye-bye and try not to so wrong. Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest news Ron and true stuff to the celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Oh.